Well, friends, today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to take our favorite restored Gateway 2000 computer tower, and this is our G6 180. It was originally a Pentium Pro 180 that we refurbished, repainted, and we now have running at 200 megahertz. So, kind of a G6 200, if you will. I'm going to open this up. We're going to look at the hardware inside. And then today what we're going to do is we're going to compare DOS, MS-DOS memory managers. We're going to look at which of two different memory managers can give us the most free memory in the 640K region, which is where MS-DOS programs, of course, like to run. And we're going to compare MS-DOS 6.22's Mem Maker against another product from the 1990s, and that's Helix's Netroom. And Netroom is a product that I had purchased back in the 90s, and I used it quite extensively. And I actually don't remember how well or how much better it did or didn't work than the Mem Maker built into Microsoft DOS 6.22. And let's go ahead and crack the case and look at what's inside because that will also determine which programs or TSRs we need to put into the higher memory to free the lower memory. Inside of our Gateway Pentium Pro Tower, we have left the original modem that came with it and there was a network card installed. We've disabled, we're going to, once we reinstall Windows 95, that's in another video, these will be disabled. We're not gonna bother with these. These won't have any programs or any usage of the upper memory. However, for the audio, we do have an Insonic a Vivo VIVO90, and it is on the Isobus. It's a 16-bit sound card. I have had tremendous success with this sound card. It is very AdLib and Sound Blaster Pro compatible. It will have some. Uh, it will have a driver that will be in the upper memory, and the video card itself won't play into our calculations today. But this is a Matrox Mystique, and this also came with the system. It's a PCI card, and. Another future video, I plan to have Windows 95 on this system down the road again. And I also plan to run some of the games at the time that actually were coded for 3D with the Matrox, Mystique, and the Millennium cards. So, that's what we'll have in the computer. It has 64 megs of RAM and a 400 watt power supply. And it does have a standard CD-ROM drive. And it does have plenty of hard drive space, especially for MS-DOS 6.22 and Win95. And along with the standard floppy, that's what we're working with. We're going to go ahead and put it back together. And then we're going to install MS-DOS. And we're going to install it cleanly twice. And like I said, we're going to have... We're going to have mouse driver, we're going to have some audio drivers, we're going to use a standard CD-ROM driver. I do have a, um, it came with a Sony 8X drive back in the early 90s, and the driver that that uh, floppy puts on any system running MS-DOS just works. It just plain old works. And as you'll see, um, we'll try out the memory programs. And here are today's competitors once more. Here's Microsoft MS-DOS 6.22. This is an original copy that I purchased back in the early 90s. And this will have MemMaker. And then I have Helix Software Netroom 3. And this is version 3. It also has a supplementary disk. And this was a memory management program at the time. Uh, one of its biggest competitors was uh, Quem. Uh, QEMM. That was another popular manage, memory manager program of the time. I never used that myself, but I was a big fan of Netroom, perhaps because I purchased Netroom. Um, but let's see how it stacks up to uh, generic MemMaker within MS-DOS. First thing we'll do is we will format our C drive from scratch. So we start with a clean slate. And we're going to do all this from the MS-DOS 6.22 diskettes. So with just disk 1 in, 
we'll be able to go ahead and F-disk the hard drive and reformat it. World's fastest format and let's install MS-DOS 6.22 and it does come on three separate floppies and like I said these were original discs I've had these since the uh, early 90s now we'll go ahead and reboot and as we can see uh, a fresh install of DOS gives us 606k bytes free of the 640k DOS memory and that's before any TSRs or memory resident programs are actually installed so the first thing we'll do is we'll put in our Logitech mouseware we do want a mouse and we'll get that installed and once that's installed we'll do a reboot just to confirm that the mouse is installed and then let's check our memory footprint And to reboot. We have mouse. So there's one memory resident program. And we're down to 580,000 bytes free of the lower 640. Now we have the CD-ROM installed, and that's going to lock us down to 516 free in the lower memory. So we're starting out with 516,000 bytes free in the lower memory. And then we'll run MemMaker first. How much can we regain? So running MemMaker is just as simple as typing in MemMaker and then running through the prompts. And I like to do a custom setup because then I can choose what to do. I can have expander to EMS memory available. I can specify which drivers to include. This is a basic DOS install though. We don't have anything fancy. We're not jamming a, a ton of programs up in there. And we're going to scan aggressively. And then we do not have Windows installed. And we'll go ahead and accept all these drivers. And then MemMaker will restart us the first time and then check to make sure everything's running. It usually comes down to one calculation unless it's too complicated. And then it reboots us again. And then if everything's working, it'll give us the option to go ahead and accept what it's come up with as far as our memory configuration. Everything seems to be working. We'll select yes. And here we are. So before it was 516, after it is 584, approximately 1,000 bytes free of the lower memory, out of 640. Not bad. That's a gain of 68,000 bytes. So, let's go ahead and install, after we redo everything from scratch, this is a fresh format DOS install. We're back to where we were before, and that's 516K bytes free. So we're back to exactly where we were before when we did the MemMaker. So let's go ahead and install Helix Netroom. And we just run setup on the first floppy for Netroom. And we'll go ahead and install it. It does want to know who we are. We are Uncle Mike. Company blank. 
And then we do have a cereal that we had when we purchased it. I don't know if a cereal is available online or if you get it um, off of the archives on the internet, uh, but we do have a valid cereal. There's probably one out there, I'm sure, available. We'll proceed. Yep. Now, because I'm not running any kind of net stack or anything like that, it's a very basic memory configuration. Um, we only had to put in the first disk. Uh, we don't have we don't have Windows installed. Uh, we don't like I said we're not using any any stacking. We don't have any network configuration. This is just one computer running alone. It's very basic. It didn't ask for any of the other diskettes. And again, it'll save your backups of your uh, auto exec and config sys. And um, I went ahead and okayed this. It said it recommends putting stacks in the config file. I have no problem with that. Now, what Netroom will do is it will let you take a look at what's on your system. It has what I think is, for the time, um, a very in-depth ability to look deep into the system here. Um, we can look into the system itself, what kind of computer we're running, uh, graphics, it knows it's PS2 supported, um, very in-depth. We can run and check the memory. We can look at our memory. Version of MS-DOS. How we're using our first megabyte of random access memory, extended memory, Hard drive, floppy, CD-ROM, available, interrupts, and then it runs sort of a benchmark, but it's not too familiar with Pentium Pro 200 systems. So, pretty in-depth for the time. And once we're done with this, we'll go ahead and exit, and then we'll go ahead and let Netroom just do its thing. It, we did run it aggressively at first, and it aired out, so we're going to do this conservatively. And see what we get on a conservative setup. Of course, we don't have Windows. At least not installed right now. This is just a basic DOS setup. Same as MemMaker, Netroom is going to run us through a couple of reboots. And you could see it thinking. One configuration, same as MemMaker. Everything seems to be running. So it'll do a final reboot. And it should ask us, is everything running well? And do we want to accept whatever configuration it's come up with?
Everything seems to be working. Mouse, CD-ROM, expanded memory. Everything seems to be right. And we're at 635 K bytes free. That's a gain of 120 K bytes over the basic DOS configuration. So let's review. So both times we started with approximately 500 and 16 K bytes free of DOS memory out of 640. When we finished up with MemMaker, we had 584 K bytes free. With Netroom, we have 635 K bytes free. It's a gain of 54 K. Now, looking at that, it doesn't seem like a whole lot I mean, most DOS programs at the time would run more than well, more than terrific in 584K. There are some, especially some games, um, that really, really, really want 605. I'm trying to remember. I think there was one that wanted 610. And again, those are few and far between, admittedly. But then... Let's say we start loading some sound drivers. All right, we're going to add those in there. And not everything fits the puzzle. So of the memory that's left in the lower memory using MemMaker, it's possible that some of those TSRs, those uh, memory resident programs, won't quite fit in what's left. With the Netroom, it looks like it's going to give us more options for it to, for it to fit everything in there. Um, correctly so everything's working um, it just gives you more room I, again I load some um, you know some sound blaster or other DOS uh, sound files in there sound um, sound programs um, it's gonna take up space and we are using a very small mouse driver also and I guess at the end of the day that's why programs like Netroom and then uh, QEMM Q -E -M -M came out um, because they needed the upper memory, the lower memory management uh, to put the drivers into the upper memory. Um, and then MemMaker came out with DOS version 6 and above, and it was a direct competitor, kind of like how Microsoft developed Internet Explorer to compete with, with Netscape and the other, you know, the other Internet Explorer quote-unquote programs of the time. Um, these do work better, Netrook and Net Netroom and and Quem, um, MemMaker is free, um, but I guess I know why I bought it back in the early '90s. Uh, and Netroom is Windows 95 compatible with version 3.04, and version 3.04 does appear to be available out there. Again, though, I don't know if there are any serials or if it requires if it requires a valid serial. So thanks for joining me. This is a little little stroll down memory lane talking about um, DOS memory management and just one more program to help us squeeze out the most we can and um, play some of our memories over and over again. This is Uncle Mike and uh, thanks for joining me.